I'm also a super fan of many different things. Uh, I'm a huge super fan in a similar way of Back to the Future. I have a ton of Back to the Future stuff. And what's really interesting about the super fan is they're so engulfed and so immersed in that space that people on the outside, they almost kind of think you're weird, right? However, if you're on the inside and you find other people who are into the same things, you kind of gravitate toward each other, right? It's so cool. And the cool thing is you can do this in your business. You don't need to be a celebrity. Uh, a musician or, or part of a boy band to make this happen. You can just be you and offer value to your audience. And today I'm going to give you a very specific framework to how to go from the moment they find you to super fan. A super fan is somebody who will go to at bat for you no matter what. They're going to market for you without even asking. It's the cheapest marketing team that you could ever, ever ask for and the best one because they're going to tell stories better than you could about your product and how that actually serves people. These are the people who are going to show up when trolls show up, right? Trolls and people who are like haters. These people will be on the front lines for you, and you probably won't even know those people exist because they have already taken care of them. And these are people who, if your brand were to change or to go down for some weird or odd reason, they're going to be sad. They're going to feel like a part of them is missing, right? And that's the feeling that we could have. And such cool stuff happens when you build super fans. For example, a friend of mine, uh, Ernesto, who started out as a fan and we became friends since then, he created this art piece for me. He's from Mexico. This art piece is string on beeswax, an ancient form of Mexican artwork. And he decided to, because he knew I was a fan of Back to the Future, create this piece for me. You have people emailing you, want to support you when you have your new projects. This is Jeffrey, for example, who said, Pat, I know you have a book coming out very soon. Uh, I don't know what it's about, but I want to buy 20 copies for my friends and family. That's legit. Right? And then you have people, so I have a podcast that comes out every Wednesday, Smart Passive Income Podcast. Um, I miss my deadline a couple times, and when you have fans, your fans get mad at you. For example, Steven, when I was late for episode 112, said this. <laughs> He's yelling at me. Where the uh, is episode 112? Thanks, love your stuff, Steve. They get upset, especially when you consistently create content and they need that in their lives, right? More than that, you can gather some amazing communities together in person and now especially online. These are fans of the show who've come together. I can tweet that I'm going to be at a restaurant somewhere and these people will show up out of nowhere and it blows my mind still today. And I've even experimented in new niches using the strategy that I'm about to share with you and it's working still. And in fact, this is more important now than ever. Because community, in my opinion, is the future of business. Bringing people together to rally behind your product is really important. So here's the framework. It's called the pyramid of fandom. So if you imagine this pyramid as your overall user base, right? Every user who's come across your stuff ever, we start at the bottom. And this is your casual audience. These are people who have just found you. They found you through a Google search. They found you through a link or a retweet or a mention, or maybe they just heard you on a podcast for the first time. These are the people that maybe they don't know necessarily who you are or what you do, but something piqued their interest, and now they're on the inside. And now it's our job to convert them from casual audience to active audience member. These are our followers. These are the people who now know who we are, what we do. When we come out with something, they're gauging whether or not they should interact. They're gauging whether or not they should purchase or participate but they know who you are, right? Your followers on social media, your email list, etc. That's often where people stop. But we need to keep going up this pyramid next to the connected community. And this is where magic happens in the brand. This is where not just you're talking to them and they're talking to you, but people in that brand will talk to each other now. And whenever you can be the facilitator, create the spaces for people to come together, those people will now be that much more connected to your brand as a result of that. And as we often hear, people come for the content, but they stay for the community. Exactly. And then finally, some of those people will naturally become super fans, although there's some things we can do to nudge them up a little bit. Now, what's really interesting about this pyramid when you look at it is actually, let me flip this over. This might look like something you are very familiar with, and I would imagine everybody at this conference especially. Traffic. You get a bunch of traffic coming over to your website. Some of that traffic turns into subscribers. Some of those subscribers turn into, of course, visitors on, on your sales page, and then some of them become customers. This is what's known as a funnel, of course, funnel. And funnels are so important because we can create automations and systems such that we can, like a funnel, just drip from the top and then boom, things pour out exactly where we want. However, the trouble with that is we often forget about the experience that a person has within that automated system. And my goal for you today is to have you walking away with some ideas on how you can create different experiences to heighten 
a person's interaction with you, your brand, your product, et cetera. So let's flip this over, right? We want to move people up. The cool thing about a funnel is it can be automated. We just pour from the top. Gravity does its work. The problem with this, though, is we're fighting gravity, right? This is not automatic. It's not 100% scalable. It's scalable, but not 100% scalable. And as we move people up, people up, let me ask you, where do you think most of the lifetime customers are in this pyramid, at the bottom or the top? Where do you think most of the commenters are, the bottom or the top? Everything's at the top. So why don't we build for the top? Why don't we create experiences on top of our funnels that allow for people to come in and feel special, such that they will also invite new people in, and they're not going to invite people in who are cold. They're going to invite people in who now, as a result of that recommendation, are coming in warm already. So I've changed my entire focus from things like SEO and ads, which do work and are still important, to for the people who are here, how do I make them feel great? How do I make them feel so valued that they can't help but share the brand, their experience, and me with others.